Jared Polin, froknowsphoto.com, here with another raw file edit of the week. And we have a very interesting photo this week. Um, very interesting in the fact that it's, it's thrown off to the side. Uh, you're going to see that when you open the file, it's actually oriented wrong. Uh, it was, it's going to be oriented like this. So how I changed it is in the library module. I just used the rotate button to move it. Uh, so what I think is interesting about this photo is the angle. It plays well to the assignment that's going on right now in the Fronos photo forum, which is the, uh, the shooting different apertures, shooting different f-stops with subjects at different focal lengths to see how the background would blow out or not blow out, or basically to see what would happen. This was shot at f4, and you can see being that it was shot only at 70 millimeters, the background isn't blown out. So if it was shot at 210 millimeters in this case at f4, and it was a tighter shot, the background would have been more blown out. Uh, I think it's an it interesting uh, take on the rule of thirds to throw the subject down near the bottom of the frame off to the right-hand side. I like what's going on here. I like that they're trying this. Let me tell you what it was shot at. 1 1250th of a second at F4, ISO 200, 70 millimeters uh, with a 70 to 210 F4, 5.6 variable aperture lens with the Nikon D300. The reason I picked this shot is I think it can be edited in quite a different, quite a lot of ways, whether it's uh, an HDR image, because I, I've seen where people do the HDR images with people and they pump up the backgrounds and the, and, the, and the stones and it all comes out pretty vibrant and then the subject looks a little more like they're painted like a video game, but I think it would be interesting to see this. And again, don't be afraid to spend more time on these images than we do. I mean, I like to only spend five or six minutes in this to keep it quick so that you guys can get to your editing and, and the video aren't too long but it'd be interesting you, you know feel free to put any plugin in that you want take it into photoshop if you want take it into whatever program you do and come up with a final image to post because it's going to be great when you post it in the forum to see what everybody's doing because you may find something that like a plugin that would be great for you to use that you never heard of that could really make the difference between getting a job or not getting a job or making your portfolio stronger or not stronger so let's get into editing this what should we do? Well, I don't I don't think I'm going to end up in color, even though the color is kind of interesting, but I just get a feel that I want to go black and white. I want to... Oh, hey. I didn't even think of that. Look at that. Take the clarity out. But let's look, you know, let's get into that a little bit. The focus seems to be missed slightly, and I don't think it detracts totally from the image, but I would love to see that the focus next time right on the eye, opposed to on the shirt, because it, it moved, uh, the focus is off. So, gonna bump up my exposure, gonna bump up my contrast like I do. I'm gonna boomify it because that's just how I like to do my files. Put in some black levels here. I mean, it would be great to recover the background, but I'm not going to in this case because it makes the image too gray. But, it, but, but I do have the option for a crop. And it's always a tough decision. That's kind of the reason why I stick to not cropping my images is because there's always something you could do to an image. And if you start overthinking everything, you know, like, should I crop this image? Should I not? Should I have shot it this way? Should I have shot it that way? If you shoot it in the camera, if I was to shoot a picture like this, this tight, and then shoot a picture all the way wide, then I would give myself the options to, to like a picture more. So I'm gonna go with this, leave a little bit of headroom, boom, hit enter. And I think we cut out the distractions in the background and gave this an interesting look. Um, so what else could we do to this? I do. I like this in the face. Um, I do touch fill light on occasions, and I've done that for a long time in some of my own photos, but also fill light can be addicting and distracting at the same time. Like, I don't like what fill light does all the time. Um, and I don't even think subtle fill light is good to use all the time because it just you know, you start to fill in the shadow, or you start to get rid of those shadows that you would have had in this case like this. So that's why I'm going with this shadow. Should I pull back? Should I go with the soft look? Hmm. Or should I go with the harsh look? Or should I just go with straight up? Why don't we go with straight up for the time being? And you know how I said that we can use plugins? Why don't I take this in the Silver Effects 2 uh, Pro because I have it here. Um, so feel free to take it into any program that you guys want and just Play with it. Make it interesting. So I'm going to do this quick. I'm probably just going to use the presets here to see what they come up with. Um, Kodak. Where's normal? So there's normal. And then boom. Look at that. Look what it did to the levels. 
So sometimes they add smoothing, and I don't like it. Ooh, look at that. Look what the, um, what is this? Ilford Delta 100. Look at that. And here's natural. And then there's this. I'm, I'm going to go with this Kodak right here. I'm going to go Kodak ISO 3200 uh, Panomatic, I guess they call it. Yeah, Panomatic X. So there's not a lot of grain. Look what happens as you add grain. I mean, this, you really could end up with a file like that if you were, if you did overcook your film. You wouldn't really see it in speed, 32 speed film, but you'd definitely see it, say, in uh, Kodak P3200. Look, that is very close to what you would have gotten back then. I mean, I could take this back to, say, the 1970s type image. Or could I, hmm. Yeah, this is just going to the extreme. I know I, I don't want to play into stereotypes, and I don't want to be like, you know, I've turned this into a war-type photo, but images are going to conjure up different feelings for everybody. But you know what? Now that I did this grainy shot, I'm going to go with it. It may not be something that I would normally do in my own image, but again, that's what we're here to do is test out different things. So should we add more grain? Take more grain out? I'm, you know what? Let's play with the grain. Let's make, let, let's do this. Soft. I don't like softening. And I don't like all that grain. But I want a little bit. Let's go with that. Where's the original? Oh, I can't do that. I can't do that from here. Um, so let's, let's go with this. I know it's, I know it's very different and strange. But let's go with that. So here we have what I edited originally, and then here we have where I ripped it apart and just totally made it into something else. Now, I'm not saying that this is the greatest edit in the world in five minutes, but this is interesting. It's something different. You don't have to follow what I did here. Just playing around. So let's see what you guys can come up with. But right now, uh, I called Adam up. Adam's going to try his hand at this and see what he comes up with. Uh, Adam, you are up. All right. This week we have a very interesting image and uh, today I think we're going to uh, break out the C word uh, it's not what you think um, yep this image is definitely calling for some cropping um, the exposure is really nice uh, the uh, image was shot with a 70 to 210 f4 to 56 so we shot at f4 um, ISO 200 and with the D300 so uh, nicely done um, this child is making good eye contact with the camera which is cool hard to say whether or not this was a vacation shot or candid I'm definitely leaning toward candid um, uh, but you know it's hard to say I'm just looking at some of the details and uh, thinking it's candid um, even though it has kind of a nice warmish glow to it it's uh, looking pretty cold I mean, you can see this kid's face is like really red and he's got his like whole winter you know pants and jacket on and hat um, anyway very interesting and uh, I'm gonna show you my what I think I could do to make this a better image um, again if you know you have another idea please download the file from the forum and post your edit as well because we would love to see it all right, so very first thing I'm gonna do is crop. Hit the R key, uh, that brings me to the cropping module. And uh, actually the first thing I'm gonna do prior to cropping is change the angle. And I'm just going to straighten it out and I want it more along the lines of where his hand is resting. Um, so I'm just gonna leave it like that. Now, uh, I'm not gonna crop uh, with the lock tool on, I'm gonna unlock the lock tool. And what that's gonna allow me to do is to not constrain proportions because in this instance by doing so I think I would lose some of the details that I feel are important. Uh, one thing I do want to lose is some of the stairs here. I find that to be the least compelling part of the image whereas these details over here these architectural details I find to be the most interesting however as it stands I feel like it's competing too much with the child. So let's bring this in um, we'll bring it into about there and I also want to crop down a little bit and I'm going to crop down to about there and I'm going to also crop up a little bit and I'm going to crop up to about there um, yep I think that that's pretty cool and I'm going to hit the R key again and there we go 
that is the cropped image right there. Okay, uh, again, color information is good. Histogram looks good. There's a lot of nice, you know, pixels <coughs> in the front of the range, which is very good. Um, however, uh, I feel like it's somewhat monochromatic. Uh, I feel like we've got a lot of like orangey and red and yellow tones here. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously despite the camouflage. So what I would like to do is do a black and white conversion. So I'm going to go up and I'm going to hit the uh, black and white, get into the black and white module. And again, because the exposure is good, I don't really want to touch that either way. However, I do want to use the fill light to bring more light into the child's face. So I'm going to bring that up to about there. And to offset the fill light, to balance things out a little bit, I'm going to bring in some blacks. And I'm going to go to about there, you know, I don't know, 10, 12, whatever. It's really just done by feel for me. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of contrast here. Um, obviously not going to do too much and I'm not going to do, you know, blow it out too far back there, but somewhere around there. Add a little bit of clarity um, and I'm just going to stop at that point. Um, I'm not really going to get into the tone curve. We don't have a lot of time. Um, what I do want to do is just do some sharpening. So again, grab the selection tool. I'm going to grab the kid's eye. I'm going to bring it in to about there and you can see the grain is starting to form. I don't want too much of that. Holding down the option key I'm going to bring the masking up to the point where it really is just doing the uh, contours um, just to sharpen things up like contours around the eyes, the nose, the mouth, etc. like that. Um, now as it stands I think the image you know looks a lot nicer um, you know if we go to the before and after um, I feel like it's a little bit more compelling. However, I still think that there's a couple more things that can be done. And I'm going to add some vignetting. Now, vignetting is one of those touchy things because, you know, vignetting can often bring your attention more toward whatever it is, you know, in the center of the, the frame. Um, or it can look, you know, kind of, you know, outlandish. Um, I'm going to try to, to do some vignetting here that's going to look, you know, interesting, that's going to draw more interest into the child without looking, you know, too contrived. Um, obviously there's different schools of thought, but I feel that in this case it's important. So I'm going to bring that down um, to about there. Um, I'm going to bring it in the midpoint a little bit there. Because although this detail is really cool, I feel like it's competing with the, uh, with the kid. So I'm going to just open that up a little bit with the roundness and then the feathering. And that's really where it's at. You know, we could go for something like that, but that's again just contrived looking um, that kind of washes it out a little bit too much so I'm just gonna go to about there I'm pretty happy with that now since I've done the um, the vignetting it's kind of darkened the image a little bit so I'm just gonna go I'm gonna grab my fill and I'm just gonna bring the fill up again it's about you know it's all about feel and, and taste and that's about where I want to keep it now, one other thing that, uh, you know, we don't normally do, um, I occasionally do this with some of my black and whites, um, I want to add some split toning. And what that's going to do is that it's going to add some tonal, uh, some color tonal detail to both the highlights and the shadows um, in this image. And since it's a black and white, it really lends itself nicely to that. Um, I'm not going to go too crazy with it, so I'm going to select my... Uh, highlights and I'm going to kind of I just want to warm things up so I'm going to select this color um, and then I'm going to do the same thing with my shadow and I'm going to select that color and as you can see that's kind of way too much so I'm going to bring the saturation all the way down so I can start at the bottom and I'm going to bring it up and just bring it into somewhere around there I'll bring the saturation in, in on the shadows to about the same point and then let's look at the balance over here. Um, that's too much, that's too little. Um, somewhere around there and I'm actually just gonna back it down just a tad on both ways just to maybe split the difference a little bit. And there we go. Um, I, uh, I think that that's kinda cool. Um, I think that, that you know doing the split toning adds uh, some nice warmth to the image um, you know, other than just a straight black and white, you know, we can look at the before and after. And if we uh, want to, we can compare this to the original image. And that's the original image. 
that's the that's my edit and that's where I'm going to keep it so back to you Jared all right and we're back we've got Adam's edit on the right and we have my I called an abomination on the left um, Adam <laughs> interesting I, I you, you channeled the more sepia feeling well I actually use split toning okay um, I I didn't want to go for straight sepia I mean, it probably has a bit of that look, but I just wanted to warm up what would have been, um, you know, what I felt to be just kind of a very stark black and white. Sure. I mean, I, I, I'm sure there will be interesting things said about the way that I use... Basically, I went into Silver Effects uh, Pro 2, and I went to a 3200-speed film just to mess around, and I let everybody know that it would be cool. They can take their files. They can spend more time than you and I normally spend on them. Uh, sure. in, in putting it into light, uh, sorry, Photoshop and playing with it or trying plugins because that's how a lot of people are going to see differences in, you know, basically see what's out there and see what you could like. <laughs> so, I mean, the reason I cropped it is I felt that I just felt it was a little distracting. Um, yeah. it, it's a tough, like I said, it's a tough choice to decide whether to crop things. And that's one of the reasons I said that I don't like to crop because then you start getting into this mindset of, well, Maybe I'll just do this later. Maybe I'll just do this later instead of, you know, concentrating it on them beforehand and and then just sticking to your guns and saying I'm not going to crop because I liked yeah. it. I liked it both ways. I think that there's a couple of different things to consider too. With some cameras, you don't actually have a hundred percent in your viewfinder. So some folks, when they shoot, they're actually getting more in their frame than actually what they're seeing in their viewfinder, right. and that's just something that you have to work around. Um, I agree that when you're just kind of shooting that, that, that you know you really want to focus on your subject and unless you're doing something for editorial where they say you know give me plenty of room so that I have you know I can crop it a bunch of different ways I agree with you that, that you know the, the cropping should be done in the camera the way that you Wait, frame it. You threw a crop in here didn't you? Absolutely. And yeah, I see that. Yeah and I really just felt that, that the stairs were, were not that compelling Yeah. Um, as, a, as a you know taking up a third of the frame and that the architectural detail of these uh, these bits, I don't even know what you'd call them, um, you know, were compelling. I have, to, I, say, to, I have to say, well, first let me say that we don't have the actual photographer's edit because they didn't send their JPEG with it. But, right. I, I, yeah, your crop is, is banging. I think it makes that file, well, a little close to the fingers on the edge now that I look at it closer. But yeah. I, I, I do think now he, he's looking at you more. and. Yeah. It's got that cool. It's got a very interesting edit, the split tone, and and the uh, the crop really really worked well. What I really like is the angle of this this um, you know uh, I don't even know what you call this architectural detail here. You know the the edge of the stair that kind of shoots up and then sure. he's sitting right underneath it, and that that lower third of the frame really kind of jumps out to me at this point. Right, and and what you what you guys are seeing here, you know, two different takes again on the same image and it would be great to get a hundred different takes you know seeing what you guys do that's what it well, felt the interesting like to thing me. about your shot is that you know by blowing it out and blowing out the highlights to that point you really can't tell you know when that hat and, and the jacket and pants were made right so it definitely call. lends itself to a more vintage feel um, I think that for my taste it's a little bit too contrasty and blown out sure but um, it, what I find to be really interesting is how we took two completely different approaches this week um, so far, de such big departures from what either of us would, would normally do. So that's kind of interesting. Right, and, and I like to say that in the video when I'm doing it, that this is not the way that I would do it myself if it was my image. Sure. But it's all, you know, to push yourself to the extreme in these situations, to, to do things that you normally wouldn't do so you can see, I don't know, surprise yourself. You never know. I mean, maybe what I did in Silver FX Pro 2 could work for something else, and maybe that pique somebody's interest or maybe I mean I, I really like the feel of your photo as well with the split tone and it's going to be interesting to see if you know I, I put out a call for people to do some HDR to see what they come up with there because sometimes those illustration HDRs look look very interesting in color so, so right. that's what's cool about this and, and I think that we've got two extreme examples we both threw a crop in this week um, yep. I went extremely interesting and you did something the way that you did it and it's and like I said, like we always say, there's no right or wrong way. No. So. Yeah. I, I mean, I feel that, that, you know, touching on the HDR with all the texture and the brick and yep. all the, the, the orangey and yellow and red tones, 
that somebody who is really, really good with HDR could probably make an interesting image of this as well. Absolutely. Yeah, so that's that's what I'd like to see. So we'll wrap it up. We'll get ready to wrap it up. And this is, you know, raw edit of the week again. And if you want to send in your raw files, be sure to find some interesting ones, whether they're portraits, landscapes, dogs, cats, birds, elephants, uh, whatever. Just things that... <laughs> a lot of people could find interesting and editable. I mean, we get a lot of great photos that we could edit, but they take a great photo and only make it slightly better because it's just, there's only so much you can do with certain ones. But this file lent a lot of ability to, to take it many different directions. So be sure to send in your raw file and high-res JPEG of your final edit so we can put it up against ours and whoever the guest is. Uh, send it to froknosephoto at gmail.com and um, maybe I'll pick your file to show up in one of these raw edits and open it up to everybody else. Adam, any final words? Nope, I think that this was a really good one. Yeah, so it's going to be interesting to see what you guys come up with, but again, that's the fun of it. So, Adam, thank you very much for doing this edit thank this you. week. All right. All right, guys, so good luck. You can download this file from the raw, well, from the forum. Follow the link in the post or down below, and let's see what you guys come up with. Good luck, Jared Poland. Pro knows photo.com. See ya.